So I have again updated my treadle base to do something different. Now it's a work in progress. It's a first attempt. It's not the most elegant solution in the history of the universe, but it works. Now, let's take a little peek underneath and see what little surprises we've got. So a little switch down there. And you'll notice that that activates a console 1001 servo motor, which I've got hooked up under there. I've got the controller there, and it's connected like that. And the reason is because that way I can switch back and forth between treadle and not treadle. So how have I done this? So you're wondering why there's a pink bungee cord there. Um, and the reason is because I need to add tension to this so that it doesn't slip. So I've ordered some larger um, belts, but in the meantime I've got the one that's not hooked up there just waiting so I can flip back and forth and this one. And then I've used a turnbuckle here to push it out so there's a bit of tension so that it doesn't rub on the holes up there. Now this adds a bit of extra tension so that it doesn't slip but not too much so that the cable will last. And of course that's set to 1200 RPM. Now the wheel I've put on here, the that was the original at 75 millimeters and what I have on there is a 45 millimeter one to reduce the speed since this thing goes up to 4500 I think RPM which is more than any of my machines will cope um, I would rather have the control in the lower range and then if I ever need to up this even more I can quite easily do that so with the pulley that's that size. I'll show you the type of control I've got. So I'll take the thread out of the sewing machine. And in fact, I will reduce release that. So what you can see here is so I'm still connected up. So one of the original thoughts was okay. Should I just put a rubber pulley on there and drive that and then I don't have to do anything special? And I contemplated it, but then what that would mean is I'd have to pull off the pitman arm. And I thought, well, okay, it's one nut and I could do that. But ultimately, I decided to go with this approach, which means I've got two separate mechanisms under there and I just switch back and forth. It's super easy to do that. Let's hear the sound of the motor. So you can hear it just running and spinning in there. And it locks. So what you do have to watch is when you release your feet off of this, because I don't have an extra lock on this, it can rock. And therefore, if it does that, when you lift your feet off, it will trigger it. However, easily I could easily put a bungee cord to prevent that, but it's not really a problem. So what's interesting is this is super quiet, as you can hear. Lovely and quiet at 1200 RPM, but this machine itself is actually the noisy part. So when I put my uh, Mackie on this, or my 411G, it would be far quieter because this is quite a noisy machine with the gears. But it's quite manageable. And of course, I also have, as you can see, the control arm is still there working. So, I'm kind of pleased with this solution. I've just ordered a few extra belts because they do wear out quickly and I wanted a thicker one. But the whole solution works and I'm able to get excellent results in control and you wouldn't even you know a little bit mucky under there but works fine so I'm good with that 
and it gives me an extra way. So why did I go to all that bother? Well, it's quieter than the electric motors. Because I'm doing so much free motion embroidery, and this is only a domestic treadle, not an industrial treadle, it's exhausting doing three hours of high-impact zigzag. So I just thought, you know, I, I really need it. So let's, I'll show you the control. So it's good for free motion embroidery. You can do, you can get that slow going. Or you can go to full speed. Now, the one thing I haven't activated yet, but will do, is the needle control. So I'm in the process of coming up with a contraption to fit on there so that I can attach the needle control with a standard uh, flywheel rather than the industrial flywheel because it, it hooks on a nut on the end so I've got to get a magnet or a contraption that goes over top to attach that and then I'll be able to move that on pretty much any of my machines as well. But that will be for another project. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting.